So the other day, I was looking through some old family, uh, like, pictures and stuff, like, family history, and I found out I had this long-lost cousin. Uh, his name is Todd. Uh, he's hiding from this group called the Agency. Pfft, yeah, I know. He, I think he's a little bit off the rails. Uh, uh, but, uh, but come here, Todd. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, you can introduce yourself to the audience. I'll leave you two alone. <laughs> this schmuck doesn't know I'm hiding from the Agency. Dom, he got mixed with some bad apples and... Wait, I think I hear him at the door. I hear the agency at the door. I'm the Noah. Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Get down. You know, they're gonna find us. They're gonna get us. They're gonna find us. <laughs> Welcome to Root Plays. I'm Daboud, and this is my Fast X spoiler review. Um, I hope you enjoy that cold open. That was something to do. Uh, very creative. Uh, each time I do something different and it gets better every single time. My opinion. It all started with the Avatar one. Now we're here with this movie. I don't do it for every single movie, but I do it for the biggest movies. Uh, that swimming cap that I put on was trying to impersonate Vin Diesel. But anyways, um, we have a new Fast and Furious movie. And oh my God, this franchise is the most milk franchise that I could ever possibly imagine. But hey, I think they did something good this time. Personally, I've not watched all of them, and I will say from right off the get-go, this will not be, like, theories. This will not uh, be, like, me ranting about other things that the franchise has done. I'm only focusing on this movie and this character. I don't care what the other characters have done in the past. I'm focusing on this movie because if I focus on the characters before, I'm going to be here for an hour ranting. So let's just, let's just get this straight to the point. Uh, make sure to make sure a little fun. Let's get started. Uh, the new Fast and Furious movie follows up with the Toretto family after events of the last movie, Fast and Furious 9. And uh, they uh, encounter a new foe along their path, around, along the road. And it is it, this villain is one of the most lethal villains they've ever faced. He's fueled with revenge and a terrifying threat emerges from the shadow of the past to shatter Dom's world and destroy everything and everyone he loves. Like, the biggest part about this movie is that you can't save everyone. You can't save all your family. And that's basically, like, the, like, a good lesson of the film. And, man, does this film have some good times. Like, let's just let's just talk about the good things about this movie. Now, I will say right off the get-go that these films are not cinematic masterpieces. But they're blockbusters. They're good old-fashioned classic action films. And they really do deliver on that. Uh, as well with some comedy and some other aspects of it. I think the action is the most uh, vital part of this franchise and cause and family of course uh but anyways let's get to uh some of the things that actually impressed me about this film unlike other films uh and uh that is uh plot um unlike the other films like plot is usually simple in fast and furious films and it's always simple in other films but this one has the most advanced and developed plot and that is in thanks to uh different storylines like we have uh, uh, Dominic Toretto going off on his adventure after there the group is separated in Rome uh, by Dante, who is played by Jason uh, Momoa, the villain of the story, which we'll get to in a moment. He is fun, uh, but um, and then you have uh, Letty, who's actually who's captured in Rome um, uh, because of something that happened in Rome. This is a spoiler review, uh, but I'll get to that in a moment. Plot. I'm mostly talking about characters right now, and. Um, we have Roman, Tej, 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 whatever, uh, Ramsey and Han, that group, they go off to London, um, all that fun stuff, they meet with Shaw, you know. And then you have uh, Brie, Brie Larson's character uh, popping up in there, and you have Jacob uh, Toretto, played by John Cena, uh, in there as well. And um, you also have um, uh, uh, Dominic Toretto's uh, son. I think he's called B, 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 hope, hopefully. Um, yeah, little B, I think, yeah. Or B, or yeah, something like that. His son uh, travels with Jacob. Anyways, and uh, I will say the Jacob one is actually the most interesting one. Uh, but um, the other group, the, the one, the, the group that's in London, they have an okay storyline. I don't find any sto any purpose for Letty's storyline. Uh, but I, I, I find uh, Dominic Toretto's storyline very fascinating in Brazil. Anyways, so just talk about the plot. Uh, this is like, so the first, um, I'll talk about the plot. Uh, the group 
uh, is well requested by the agency. They uh, go down to Rome, uh, but seems a trapped. Uh, it's actually a trap because of um, Dante uh, wants revenge on Dom uh, for uh, her, Dante wants revenge for, for on Dom for hurting his family, uh, which you could see uh, the effects of from uh, Fast and Furious. Uh, five if i remember correctly i think that's it right yeah i think that's it and um well uh they get separated by a bomb and they will that group will the, the group the group is blamed for it not dante and they are separated from there uh dom uh faces uh, dante in brazil in, in a race and um that is where he's truly put to the test when he has to save someone and he and he saves um, someone he never knew, but kind of knew at the same time. And um, Dante's like all over the place in this film. And uh, well, so interesting, so interesting. I'm not really invested into the franchise, but I'm not going to talk about the previous films. But this film alone just has a lot of stuff. I will tell you this right off the bat. Casual fans, you could just enter this film and just have fun with the film. You don't need to think about it. And that is uh, because, thanks to part, the action of the film. The action of the film was just stunning. It was, it was amazing. Especially um, uh, <laughs> some uh, that, that last part of the film where uh, uh, Dom's son, I think, I'm, I'm telling you, I think his name is B, right? Got a, whatever. Uh, he's stolen and um, he has to get him back on the highway and then they are trapped at a reservoir and that, that falling out perfect scene. I will also tell you, Rome, uh, quite uh, a good old-fashioned fast. You knew it was Fast and Furious because they, they had racing that was put off a good uh, a, a task for the agency, and um, you, you felt the Fast and Furious mission vibe, but um, it was all a trap. And um, also, uh, Cyphers uh, uh, and uh, Letty's fight in uh, the prison, also quite uh, a very nice Fun fact, they shot that without a director because uh, this film had some controversy because it, it, it kept losing directors. Uh, it, it lost its previous director and then it had to bring in a new director. A new, you have the point. Uh, but they settled on a new director and I think they did a perfect job. Uh, what's, in, what's their name? Louis Lit. 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 I'm bad with names. Um, just look on Wikipedia. <laughs> um, but action, you just have to see this film yourself to see the action, because the action is something else. And uh, quite, quite the action, I'll tell you that much. Um, and um, there's some moments that you, had, I had a jaw drop, or like, it was just, it was amazing action that, there, there was some stupid fun action, and there was some actual real action. Uh, um, comedy in this film, I have to read off my notes. Comedy in this film, comedy is really on... There's there's some moments of the film that uh, depend on the comedy, but um, like uh, the Jacob storyline, that really depends on the comedy of it. Uh, but there's also moments like throughout the film, like with Dante, because Dante is a very humorous and very larger than life villain, and he's like a Joker, which I'll get to in a moment. I'm I'm, I'm building up, and uh, uh, the main group also has its jokes too, like when Pete Davidson has a cameo in it. Uh, in, in the movie, and um, Han gets uh, uh, a little woozy off some muffins. Yeah, muffins. Mm -hmm. You just gotta go see it for yourself. I was like, okay, it's not as ridiculous as taking people into space, but it's, but it's, but it still maintains that Fast and Furious vibe. But I'll tell you, it was about to cross that border between space and on ground being Fast and Furious because. Fast and Furious franchise, the one problem they have is they can take it too far and they're like, no, this is not realistic. Why did they do this? Um, and that is one of the biggest problems of the film. Even though I tell you this film does it better than other films, it's it's less crazy. It brings back like half of the, it brings back a couple dead people, okay? We'll get to that later. Uh, but it brings back dead people um, like in the, uh, the, 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 the post, uh, Giselle. Post credit, uh, not the post credit, mid credit, whatever. Uh, at the end of the film, and uh, well, I mean, you cannot trust the Fast and Furious franchise. How crazy they could be! Like, 
we had a couple deaths in this film, which I get to in a moment. Uh, but uh, uh, well, I don't think they're dead. Uh, because the, the Fast and Furious franchise is like immortal. No one really dies. They always keep bringing people back, and uh, as well as um, like the craziness factor of it. But the comedy, uh, yeah. Whoa, this conversation really derailed. Yeah, the comedy of this film, I really like the comedy of this film. It's very simple, very plain comedy, but it does the trick. And uh, you, you, it maintains that Fast and Furious-esque quality to it. Uh, suspense. I, will, I was shocked. It, it was very suspenseful. Because, again, this is a finale of the franchise. This is like Avengers Infinity War of Fast X. And, yeah, I could see that. Number one, you leave off with a cliffhanger. Okay. I will say Avengers and Infinity War didn't really have a cliffhanger. It just I had a more a little bit peaceful ending, but whatever. Nah, I mean, like, half the universe getting wiped is not peaceful, but, like, more settled, not a cliffhanger. But you can see that Avengers and Infinity War-esque quality to this film. Uh, also, uh, you just have the stakes. Like, you don't know if anyone's going to die. It's not like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 where we were told somebody's going to die, but nobody died. Um, and, uh, well, in this film, we did not know if they were going to survive. We did not know if they were going to die. And we did not know if they were going to pull, pull up, a. uh, they, they usually put uh, Fast and Furious plays this trick. Like you think they're dead, but they're not. Uh, I don't know. They, they had, usually a movie has two cards, dead or not dead. This movie has three cards, dead, not dead, maybe dead. They come back from the dead. That's, that's, that's one of the crazy factors that I just don't like about the film. Um. It feels very inconsistent. Like, you have these big modes of the franchise, and then you just ruin them by bringing back care. It was okay film. I'll tell you that much. Uh, lessons in this film, I'll tell you. Um, there was a lot of lessons in this film. Like, um, like you can't save all your family, and you have to protect your family. It all, it's, it's all about familia. It's all about family. So, like, you, you, you understand. It's about, like, helping people. And, um, yeah. And horror, I'll give it, uh, I, oh, I'm getting to more rankings. I'm getting too ahead of myself. Um, but horror in this film was, I'll, t I'll tell you about Dante. You know, might as well just say about Dante. Well, Dante is quite a delightful villain. Just seeing Jason Momoa's, like, passion for the role and his, like, performance, it's just a top-notch performance. Like, I, I'm, he, he. Dante, I don't know how, but he's in my top five villain list of all time. That is a very exclusive list. The Joker, guy from Whiplash, Dante, very exclusive list. Thanos, High Evolution, very exclusive, very exclusive list in my opinion. And I don't know how Dante got on there, but he got on there because the just the brilliant uh, performance and the passion uh, that you can just feel from the screen, the, the, the chaos um, that was just put into the role. Uh, really made it delightful, and I I couldn't. I was like, okay, okay, enough enough time for Don. Where's 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 Dante? I want Dante. I want Don. Man, he was paid. He was, he dragged a couple dead people to to, uh, to uh, cipher to prove a point, and he also killed somebody because they didn't have family. Ooh, ouch! And then he and then he painted the toenails of a, a security guard that he had killed and uh, was uh, doing a, this guy's off the rails really off the rails and um also um that one ballerina moment it, on, on the bridge uh he was like bam 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 started to, because he has this army of people behind him uh defending him and um i was like what oh my god like and he is really similar to the joker and that's not a bad thing but this is a villain that fits the Fast and Furious franchise. And, and you might be like, hold up. Doesn't the Fast and Furious franchise, like, you have Dom, who's a really serious person, talks like this, he talks like this, a family, family, cause of family. And then you have this over-eccentric Dante guy. But Dante really fits the craziness perspective and the craziness of the franchise. The, I'm telling you, I'll bring it back again. The franchise can get a little bit crazy. They can get not realistic but this person dante he's realistic but at this no, number one he's realistic number two he fits with the story number three um he's he 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 has a balanced crazy 
for the franchise. Not too much, but enough. And man, it was wow. Um, also, something I want to mention: all the main returning characters have their own moment to shine in this film. Really, they do. And not, I mean, all, but I mean, like, you get the point. All the characters in this film, the the ones that we focus on the storyline, they get a moment to shine, and that's fine. Even if it's a mech scene, like really mech scenes. Uh, I will tell you the one most underutilized character, Shaw, but, but he's probably going to be utilized a lot in the next film, so I'm not really complaining, as well as Hobbs, because he was in the post credit scene, but I'm so excited to see The Rock again. And um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, the, the, the suspense was increasing every single minute of the film. I could not take my eyes off. I was I was talking to my friend. Uh, uh, the, firstly, we were alone in the movie theater. Here's a clip to, to prove that we were alone in the movie theater. Nobody here. So, uh, continuing, like, I mean, like, I, I, I was, like, looking at the screen the whole time, and I was like, hey, hey. I was talking to my friend, like, can you refill my drink? And I was like, sure, sure. He didn't mind, but he didn't really like the film. But I was like, oh, my God, I can't take my eyes off this film because I'm just, like, a true cinephile. Yeah. But even casual fans, they're like, oh, my God. Like, I I've seen casual fans for the responses, and they've always had good responses. And, I mean, like, I'm so happy for the Fast and Furious franchise. They reached a new high point. The last film was, eh, eh. It was a terrible film, in my opinion. And it restored some faith in the franchise that I had. And um, I feel like as much as I said, like, even though Fast and Furious is the most milked franchise, I feel like they are very reinventive. And I think they might, like, beat the MCU to some things. They're like, in ways, the Fast and Furious franchise is better than MCU because it actually reinvents a lot of things. And it also keeps some qualities throughout films like the mcu is just bouncing all over the place if it was a chart the the, the mcu would be like a, like a like a zigzag and then you just have an up peak at m game and then you just have down like a flat line during phase four and then you have a peak at the guardians of the galaxy volume three but the crazy line but fast and furious i think has a very consistent uh like line of like uh quality and they have a very similar quality i feel like they're pretty good films but this film really restores some faith in the franchise. And man, I will tell you, I am on board for the next two films. Two films? Because this is a three-part finale because how amazing this film was. I mean, if they did really good with this film, it can only get better from here, right? So I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with this film. And I, I, I mean, I love how also like the lesson of fear is like an uh, overarching element of the story. Like daddy do you fear anything and like like i like to say that this movie is about family cause and fear that's a new thing for the fast and furious franchise fear but that is something that's just adds so much development to the story um and saving ones you love is also a very important one and i can't wait to see how it develops and talk about some spoilers like that whole London team, I'm not going to tell their names because I, I, my throat hurts a lot. Uh, but that team and uh, Jacob, I felt bad for the sacrifices, but are they really dead? They're probably going to come back. Plus, we didn't see Jacob's body. We didn't see their bodies in, uh, from the helicopter crash. Where are they? And especially that cliffhanger, the three, two, one, and then the reservoir almost uh, collapsing on them. And it's just like Dante just overlooking with just fun, like, you have to see Jason Lowe in this film. Like, I might as well buy the DVD of this film, not for the Fast and Furious name, just to see Jason Lowe's performance. That's the only reason I'd see the film again, or I'd buy it in a, a, a Blu-ray of it. But anyways, this is just an amazing film that really restores some faith and really uh, makes me more excited for the next couple films and makes me more excited to see how all of this, these 20 couple years of this franchise will end all right let's get to my ranking uh action i give 4.5 plot i give four comedy i give 3.5 suspense i give five lesson i give 3.5 and horror i give one that those dead corpses i did not expect that overall i give it four it's more like 3.8 but if i were to round it i i'd say four Fast and Furious X is blew my expectation and was far way better than the last film with its flaws, 
it delivers a fun time at the movie theaters with lots of suspense and just fear for the characters that we've loved so long and it just it is a great starting point for a nice finale and i think i think it does a good job to entertain its audience which a movie should be i mean and it's also a good time to to uh, it's also a good uh a family film not like to bring your family but i mean like well if you have little ones don't bring it to this film uh but i mean this is a truly a family film about family but might as well bring your family uh, so this was the boot play this is my fast x spoiler review make sure to subscribe to the notification bell well, make sure to subscribe to the notification bell the like button with the boot plays